Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video all on how to properly do research for a pet. Researching, I feel like not many people understand of what actually needs to go on when you're researching before getting a pet. There's a lot more than just how to house it and what to feed it. You really have to make sure that pet is going to fit your lifestyle and there's a lot of things people are missing when they're doing research and this is how a lot of animals end up in shelters or being shoved on Craigslist and getting moved from spot to spot because people are just lazy and don't bother to do their research and they impulse getting pets. So I'm going to go through what you should actually be researching before. So your first thing is going to be your general information. So this is first of all what animal are you getting and what breed if you're getting a dog or a horse. The next thing is their instinct. Are they a prey or are they a predator? Because this is going to be a big responsibility for you as a pet owner to ensure you're doing the things for that. So if you have a predator, you need to make sure you're taking them precautions, especially if you have other small animals in your household, that you're making sure you are keeping them away and getting tools and devices to make sure you're keeping the safety of both the dog and your other small animals or even if you are getting a dog and you're going on walks and stuff if you have a very high reactive dog who has a really high predator instinct like huskies your best bet is to maybe get a muzzle or something so if you do come across maybe a small Bichon Frise or Chihuahua you know your dog is going to be safe that's the same with prey, you need to make sure you are providing your prey animal with the things they need to feel secure. The next thing is, will this pet fit your lifestyle? You need to look into what they are bred for and will this pet actually fit what you need? Will their playtime and their exercise suit your needs? Are you able to provide for that playtime? Because if you work 9 to 5, 5 days a week, Maybe don't go getting things like ferrets and stuff because they have to have six to eight hours out and if you can't supervise that or if you can't provide that, reconsider getting the pet. Then the enclosure slash space. How much space do you need for this animal? What's the best enclosures? Don't just look at the space and then get the cheapest enclosure that you find that fits that. Actually invest into a really good setup because this is going to save you money in the long run. So if you're getting smaller animals, I definitely recommend the Midwest Critter slash Ferret Nations. They are very durable and you know they're going to last you a long time. Whereas getting something cheap like a KT cage or something like that, that is not going to be durable and you're more likely going to have to replace it sooner rather than later. So make sure you're actually looking into the best cages that you can get for your animal or if it's a dog or something. Look into the best crates because some of the cheaper crates that you can find at Kmart or Walmart or things like that, yeah, they're cheap and they're great prices, but are they going to be durable enough to hold your dog? So really look into the best product for that and invest into it because it's going to be one, safer for your animal, two, better for your animal, and three, better for your The next and most important thing in my eyes is diet because if your animal is on a poor diet, your animal is going to have poor health. It's just the way it works. The food that, that your animal eats eat is their fuel. It's like a car. You want to put good fuel in your animal to keep it healthy and alive. You don't want it just to be living. You want it to be thriving. So really research into food. Look at all the diets you can do for that animal look at the best ones and look at if the foods are readily available i see that a lot people buy an animal and then realize oh crap the good foods and stuff isn't actually available around me what am i meant to do so they end up just dumping it which sucks or they are shoved on a really crappy diet so really look into your food first of all look what they are are they carnivores are they herbivores are they omnivores insectivores whatever they are look into it and then look into the best foods for that or the best diet for them 
and then look if they are readily available where you are. Now, things like dogs and cats, make sure you can have access to things like organs and bones and things like that. Or if you have rats and stuff, make sure you can have access to things to make a rat mix. Or if you want to do fortified, look into good fortified mixes. Same with hamsters and things like that. Really make sure everything is available and everything is in your price range. Because if you can't afford a good diet, say goodbye to that pet. Because if you can't afford $50, $60, say, on a raw food diet, well then you can't afford the vet bills that may come with owning that pet. So really, I cannot stress this enough. Look into your animal diet. Don't just go for the first YouTuber or whatever you see. Go to pet nutritionists. Talk to holistic vets. Do your own research. I spend hours and hours a day researching pet diets and stuff. It's something that I like to do because I like to make sure my animals are getting the top and best thing I can give them. So really, really The next one is cost. Now, a lot of people don't look into the cost of getting an animal and don't research this because they're lazy and then it bites them in the bum later on when a big vet bill comes up and they don't expect it to be the price it is. It's so important that you are looking in the averages of what a vet bill for that animal will cost. It's very important that you're also looking into their common medical issues, which is a dot point I have later on. But you want to make sure, one, you have a safety net. It's recommended for things like dogs, cats, ferrets to have at least $1,000 backed up in case of an emergency situation. Ferrets especially, you really need to make sure you have a good backup plan. They are so, so prone to things like influenoma, adrenal disease, heartworms, things like that. And it's your responsibility to make sure you can back that animal up and give it the medical attention it needs because you're the one who put that animal in that situation. I'm not saying you gave your ferret influenoma or you gave your dog a broken leg, but you bring that animal into a situation and you have to make sure you can afford it. It's not just about the price of the animal. It's not just about the price of the cage. It's food costs. I see this a lot with carnivorous pets. People are like, I don't have the money to spend on raw food. Well, that is your stupid fault. You should have realized that before getting an animal because if you can't spend $30, $40 on raw food, which is way cheaper than all these high quality kibbles, that means you're not paying for vet bills and it's obvious. So make sure you research cost vet bills. Have a backup. Look at their food. Make sure you can afford the good food because you buying the best food and giving your animal the best diet, you're going to save a whole bunch of money on vet bills. It all weighs out, but you need to be the responsible one and really thing a lot of people overlook is their grooming slash hygiene requirement for their animal. I see so many people mistreat double coated dogs. They don't think that small animals need grooming when in actuality every animal needs some sort of grooming maintenance. Whether it's as simple as providing a sand bath for your hamster, that is required. Your hamster needs to clean itself. Or if it's something like guinea pigs. A lot of people, for some unknown reason, don't think guinea pigs need nail trims. They do. Uh, same with ferrets. Every animal has a requirement. Not all animals are going to be the same. Some require more grooming. Some require less grooming. But that is your responsibility to look into. So, first of all, nail trimming. Do you have a good pair of nail clippers? Do you know how to trim an animal's nail? Do you know how to safely do it? What's the correct way to trim that animal's nail? Or if you're getting into horses, do you know how to trim horses' hooves? Or do you know a good person to do it for you? Can you afford, again, their grooming needs if you have to take them to a groomer? Second of all, brushes. If you have an animal that needs brushing, you have to be researching what's the best 
brush for them. This goes for double coated dogs especially. You need to make sure you're getting the best brush for that because the wrong brush can cause serious harm. What is their hair type? Are they double coated? Are they just short? Are they woolly? Are they whatever the case may be? You need to make sure you're looking into their coat care because the lack of coat care, you're going to have serious issues and that animal is going to suffer. Uh, and also, how often do you have to do all this? Research. Nail trimming for most animals should be about once a month or every fortnight. Um, and brushing can vary on the animal. Double coated dogs, you pretty much have to brush weekly. So brushing is something that you don't like or a lot of fur is something that you don't like. Make sure you're not going to go get a double coated dog. Um, so yes, you need to make sure you're researching. And also a big thing, can your animal actually have bath? I see many people bathing rabbits. I see many people bathing ferrets way too often. It is detrimental, so make sure you're researching. Can this animal actually have a bath? Do they need bath? Cats, ferrets, rabbits, all things like that. They don't need bath. But yeah, I see so many TikToks and so many YouTubers promoting bathing for these animals and it's wrong. You're putting your pet's life at risk because bathing can kill rabbits. Even with shearing or shaving, you can't shave a double coated dog. And I see so many people shave their huskies or shave their Eurasias. You can't shave a double coated dog. Go research on what happens when you shave a double coated dog you're doing worse than good so make sure you're researching what exactly they need how often they need it and what the best tools to meet that so the next thing is medical conditions you have to be researching what your animal you're getting is most commonly prone to what diseases things like that what are them diseases, what are the causes, the prevention, and how that disease works, how it affects the animal body. Now, yes, that is a lot of research, but that's the responsibility of becoming a owner of a pet. You need to ensure that you're doing the best life for that pet because, matter of fact, is you chose the pet, the pet didn't choose to live with you, so you need to ensure you're giving it the best life possible. And that includes making sure you're doing proper medical research. I see a lot of animals passing and everyone's like, unknown cause. Oh, they were fine one night and not the next. No, it's not an unknown cause. You just didn't do your research and you didn't see these signs. So make sure whatever animal you're getting, look up what they are most prone to, what their symptoms are, and how you can prevent it. A lot of these sicknesses are prevented. Insulinoma is so prevented if you just feed a good diet of only meat and stop giving these crappy sugar filled vitamin paste and these grains and crappy filled kibbles. Uh, GI stasis is very preventable by giving a high quality hay and veggies to rabbits. It's very easy to treat as well. You really don't have to go to the vet if your animal or if your rabbit comes into stasis it's very easy to treat at home but yet people just rely on the vet to fix them and the vet to tell them what's wrong when you should know a little bit prior and know how to treat it because if you're in a situation let's just say it's a public holiday no vets are open do you know how to medicate for the time that you can't get a vet do you have a backup plan it's very very important it's not an object it's not a teddy bear these are living things that you're responsible of making sure you know everything about it before bringing it into your home because they did not choose to live with you, you chose them to live with you. So